Hello everyone, my name is Dan the Tutor. Today we're going to be covering the relationship between velocity, frequency, and wavelength, specifically for waves. So here's a question for you. Have you ever seen any of these equations? V equals lambda times f, t equals 1 over f, or omega equals 2 pi times f. All three of these equations are related to waves, waves propagating through space, either transverse or longitudinal waves, any kind of wave, even a wave in the ocean technically can follow this model. Because here's what all three of these things mean. First, V equals lambda times F. V is your wave speed. You can also think of it as wave velocity. It's how fast the wave is moving, typically measured in meters per second. That's going to equal lambda, which is your wave length. And in case you're curious, this is Greek letter lambda. Funny spelling there. That's an A. Let me clean that up. That's better. And wavelength is typically measured in meters. If you're ever given centimeters, chances are you will convert to meters. And then that is times your F, where F is your frequency, which we'll be talking about more in a second. And that's measured in the units of 1 over seconds, which we rarely ever say 1 over seconds. Almost always we use the units hertz, hz, instead, named after some famous scientist who I assume his name was hertz. So a classic example of this would be, for instance, an electromagnetic wave. Because as we all know, and if you didn't know this, then now you do, an electromagnetic wave is another word for just light, which means its velocity is always the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And I can just make up a wavelength for us. I can say the wavelength, again, lambda, is 200 micrometers. If you remember, micro means that it's really 200 times 10 to the minus 6th meters. If you'd like to know more about converting units, I'll have a card in the timeline of this video showing up right now, so you can click on it. And let's say I want to solve for the frequency. This wouldn't be hard at all. All you would say is V equals lambda times F, where V is three times 10 to the eighth equals 200 times 10 to the minus sixth times the frequency. And if you want to solve for the frequency of this electromagnetic wave, all you would do is divide by 200 times 10 to the minus sixth, like this. And when I plug that in my calculator, which I have to be careful when I do this because it's easy to mess up the scientific notation here. But if you do it correctly, then you'll get a final frequency of 1.5 times 10 to the 12th hertz. And there is our frequency. Is that a big frequency? I suppose for you and I, the answer is yes, because humans would not be able to detect a frequency that high. But for something like light, you can say that's a very reasonable value. Okay, so now I want to talk more about the frequency, because almost all of my students at some point or another have trouble understanding the concept. So I'm going to give an example that we can all wrap our head around, and that is track and field, which is something I ran in high school, well, technically middle school. And thank goodness they never cut people from the track and field team, or else I never would have been on the team. So let's say I run around the track, and I run around in a time of 100 seconds. For those of you who are actually in track and field, you'll know that's a terrible time. But obviously I'm using this because it's a round number and because this is probably realistic for me. So this 100 seconds, the time it takes, we would say to complete one rotation, revolution, oscillation. All of those things tell us that the period T is 100 seconds. And again, we call that the period. The period is the time it takes to complete one of these revolutions, oscillations, rotations, lap, whatever you want to call it. And if you want to find the frequency, it's simply one over the period. So in my example here, my frequency is one over 100 seconds. That would be a frequency of 0 0.01 hertz. So another way you can think of frequency is it's the opposite of period, where if period is the time to complete one lap or one rotation or one revolution or whatever, then your frequency could be described as the number of laps per one second. Now, obviously in track and field, 
no one's running a lap in less than one second. But if I have something moving back and forth much faster, like for instance, a kid flicking a yo-yo up and down over and over again, then we can start to see frequencies like two hertz or five hertz, or in other words, two oscillations up and down movements every second, five oscillations per second, 100 oscillations per second. And once you get to something like light that moves really, 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 really fast, some would say the speed of light, you can get frequencies as high as 1.5 times 10 to the 12th. So that's what frequency is from a conceptual standpoint. And again, here's the equation for frequency. It's one over the period. And finally, we have one more quantity that we need to describe, and that is the angular frequency, which is omega. We've seen angular frequency before earlier in physics one, typically with angular kinematics or angular momentum or rotational kinetic energy. But now we're talking about angular frequency in the context of waves. And for that, we're going to say omega equals 2 pi times f. And again, f is our frequency. Which means you could also write this equation like this. 2 pi divided by t, where again, t is our period. You can write it like that as well. And the angular frequency is kind of hard to understand in terms of wrapping your head around it. It's not as easy as, let's say, frequency or period, where I can give a real world example. But where angular frequency comes into play is in the wave equation, which I'll say in two seconds, but just first, real quick, angular frequency has units of radians per second. And you don't have to know why, you just have to memorize it. But now I wanna talk about the wave equation. This is not Schrodinger's wave equation from quantum physics. That's way too advanced for what we're doing right now. All I'm saying is that for any wave, like imagine a string going up and down, up and down forever, then the equation of this wave can be modeled by y of x comma t equals a times sine of kx minus omega t plus phi, close parenthesis. There is a lot to unpack here with this equation. As a matter of fact, every single letter or Greek letter I wrote, I will explain what it means. And then we'll look at some example problems. So I'm not even gonna start with the left side. The left side's already confusing enough. Let's start with the A here. This is the easiest thing to comprehend. This A is our amplitude. Amplitude is saying how high did the wave go? So looking at our graph here, if I just make up a number and say that this peak right here, or any of the peaks for that matter, is at five meters, then the amplitude would be five meters. And it would also mean that down here, you'd probably have negative five meters, but the amplitude is always measured from the zero point. So in my example, I just made up right here, A would be five meters. Now the sine. The sine has to do with the fact that this is a sinusoidal, it's going up and down, it's periodic. Just know that this sine could also be cosine sometimes. It doesn't matter. So if you see cosine, that works as well. Now here's the first really fun part. Kx is describing the position of this wave. Because remember this, waves are always a function of position and time. So in a minute when we talk about omega t, that's gonna be the time portion of the wave. But the green part here, the Kx, that is our position. And what you need to know is that K, which is known typically as the wave number, and I don't know why, but it's called the wave number, that is equal to two pi over our wavelength lambda. So for instance, if I draw another wave here, like this one, and remember that wavelength is always the distance from the same point in a wave. So we can say this distance right here is one wavelength. And let's say this wavelength is nine meters. Remember that K will not be the nine meters. Nine meters is our lambda. So if you wanted to solve for K in our wave equation, then that means K is gonna equal two pi over nine. And that's what you would see in the equation. K equals two pi over nine. Okay, that's wave number. Back to our equation here, the wave equation. Next, we're gonna talk about the time component, omega t. Like we already said, we know what omega is. Omega is the angular frequency. And we knew that we have two equations for omega. It's either two pi times f, or omega can also equal two pi over t, the period. And just like wave number, you can either find it for the graph, or they can give it to you in the equation, and you can solve for whatever they want you to.
Another thing I want to draw attention to right here. See in the middle here, this minus sign? So whenever the signs are opposite, in other words, we can see here positions positive and then the time is negative because we're subtracting it. If you have opposite signs, like for instance, a positive and a negative, then the wave we would say is traveling forward or to the right. So let me write this again down here so I have more room. If we have kx minus omega t, or if you have negative kx plus omega t, both of these equations have opposite signs, which means that the wave is moving forward, or we could also say to the right. And then if they have the same sign, so for instance, kx plus omega t, or you could even have negative kx minus omega t, then we would say that this is the same sign scenario and that the wave therefore must be moving backwards or to the left because we typically describe left as negative. Okay, now there's only one more thing to explain from this wave equation and that's the phi, Greek letter phi here at the end. This is known as a phase shift and a phase shift simply means how much are you moving the wave to the left or the right. And out of everything I just said, it's the least important. It, you'll probably never even see it show up in a question. So I'm not even gonna bother explaining it beyond that. Oh, and finally, as I said before, waves are a function of position x and time t. And so therefore this variable y right here, you can describe that as the current displacement. How far away are you from the zero at that moment? So let's look at an example to see what we're talking about here. Let's say y of x comma t is equal to six sine of four pi x plus two t. And I'm not gonna put a phase shift here because we rarely ever see phase shifts anyway. And there's quite a few questions I can ask here. Number one, I can ask what's the amplitude, wavelength, and frequency? And that is what I'll ask first, and then I'll ask a follow-up question after that. So right away, I know the amplitude is six because it's right there in the equation, and it really is that easy most of the time, but not always. So we're gonna say the amplitude is six. The fact that this is sine and cosine literally doesn't matter. I am skipping that. If I want to find the wavelength, that comes from the x part, the four pi x. Now here's what I would say. The equation gives us k, the wave number. And I know my wave number k is the four pi part. It, it doesn't include the x. But what I can say is k equals four pi. And I know that k is equal to two pi divided by lambda. If I want to solve this for lambda, I just switch the positions of the k and the lambda. So lambda equals two pi over k, which would be two pi over four pi. The pi's cancel and you'd get a wavelength of one half meter. There's our wavelength. And then the final question I'm asking is what's the frequency? Remember that the frequency is gonna come from the two T part. Remember that the two is my omega, the angular frequency. So I'm saying omega is two, not the lowercase t. And I know that omega equals two pi times my frequency, which means solving for frequency, frequency equals omega divided by two pi. So then since omega is two, that's two over two pi, the twos cancel, the pi remains, and my frequency is gonna be one over pi hertz, which I can plug that in a calculator to get a decimal, but I don't care because this is a perfectly acceptable answer, so I'm not gonna do it. And that answers my first three questions, what's the amplitude, wavelength, and frequency? And then for the part B of this question, I'm going to ask, what is the wave's displacement at x equals five and t equals three pi. And the units for those would be x equals five meters and t equals three pi seconds. So all I would do for that is plug in the equation and solve for y. So it will look like this. Six times the sine of four pi times x is five plus two times three pi 
close parentheses. And now I just have to simplify this. Y equals six sine of 20 pi plus six pi, which is the sine of 26 pi. And you can plug this in your calculator. If you do, make sure your calculator is in radians when you do this. If it's in degrees, you'll get the wrong answer. But of course, I do not need my calculator for this because I know the sine of 26 pi is a coterminal angle to the sine of zero radians. And if you don't know what I mean by that, to then just find a video on YouTube about coterminal angles. I don't have one yet, but there's plenty of them out there. So then I'll say y equals six, the sine of zero is zero, and so therefore the displacement at this period of time is zero meters. It's like at the origin. If you can picture a wave again going back and forth like this, at some time and some place, the wave is essentially right there, my blue dot. It's at the origin, but you can see it's still moving up and down. And my last question for this one would be, which way is the wave moving? Is it left or right, forwards or backwards? And if you remember that, then all you need to do is look back at the equation, specifically the four pi x plus two t part. So since four pi x plus two t, they have the same sign, therefore the wave is moving backwards or we'll say to the left, moving to the left. And if they were opposite signs, then it'd be moving to the right. And there we go. So that's a good introduction to everything about waves, the wave equation, frequency, angular frequency, wave number, wavelength, wave speed, all that good stuff. If you have any more questions, please post them in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.